Okay, earlier today I uh, tweeted out that I was going to do a video on my process for choosing tops, bottoms, uh, identifying potential uh, momentum reversals, and how it impacts my trading strategy. So I know a lot of popular traders on Twitter and uh, YouTube and others go for momentum plays, meaning find where there's a bit of volume and a breakout and ride the wave partially up. I tried that strategy for a while, never really suited me, um, although it suits other people just fine. So I'm gonna show you my strategies and how and why they're different. So first thing uh, to understand is picking bottoms and how to do this using a combination of two indicators, the volume weighted average price anchored to specific key dates, usually recent lows, sometimes earnings, uh, volume shelves, these pink bars here represent volume by price, which uh, I call volume shelf. And then occasionally, excuse me, I'll use RSI and the average true range as another potential indicator to determine um, momentum reversals. So in this case, you'll notice uh, a couple things. One, on these lines moving up, I've put in a shaded band above the volume weighted average price that's anchored to these dates. So you can see here this dip, we've got the volume weighted average price moving here, and this line represents 6% above. As soon as the S&P 500 peaked above 6% above, there was an aggressive sell-off, and then it ranged for a little bit, sold off more, created a new anchored VWAP here with 6% above at this line, so the S&P 500 takes a couple weeks to get right back up here and another sell off though not quite as aggressive meaning it took more time to reach there and the total move was a little bit smaller in terms of it wasn't quite as high and it didn't go quite as low. This third time here we've got a new volume weighted average price anchored here to the uh, end of October beginning of November. Big gaps up for a couple days and a couple day range another big gap up touches that 6% zone and immediately sells off. And then we've been having this nice little trending up streak. Now, I could, if I wanted to, put another volume weighted average line here, but I don't think that this is uh, representative of where the, uh, the next sell off is going to fall to. So I really like this line to see um, the S&P 500 move back to, or potentially even one of the previous lines and again all this is barring some new black swan event or whatever else i think mortgage floor foreclosure is one of the next big ones that people are talking about anyway so you can see that the s p 500 has been uh petering on up and is getting really really close to the six percent band again and around that point is when either i put a little bit of money into playing the market down into puts or i just exit any trades i leave all my investments in but any trades that I'm doing, I exit and I wait for the drawdown before looking to get back in the market. Now, another thing that can play into that is the average true range. What this represents is how, uh, how much the average price of the stock moved um, in the last several days. I'm gonna, let me see if I can see how many days this is showing on uh, 14 okay so this is the average amount of movement in the s p 500 over the last 14 days so you take the last two weeks the average amount that it moved in a day over those two weeks equals the atr here and so what you can see as the s p 500 continues to march on up here the average true range gets lower and lower and lower which to me and this is my interpretation of the information i'm given suggests there is less conviction, there's less momentum, right? This, the buyers driving the price up are getting, uh, the price, excuse me, let me rephrase that, the price is moving up slower and slower and slower, and then it has a big swing down. Uh, so then we get some big swings for a little bit, and you notice here, same thing starts to happen is the average true range is moving down, 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 and we're not quite as low as, as it was in this last uh, big pullback. So I, that's why I think there might be a little more time in this rally, but I'm getting ready for another pullback soon. And uh, I expect that to happen in the, next, in the next week or two, really, if not sooner. 
uh, QQQ, very similar. Typically, again, I do this with the, in, the, uh, the indexes. I don't like to do it with individual stocks as much, um, but the indexes are a great way to judge the health of the market overall. Uh, so here's QQQ. You can see on this latest dip, we're right at the top of this 6% band. Now, again, I could add another volume weighted average price here, which would put 6% just a little above, maybe the 111 range, 110 range. Um, and if I added some 6% bands like to this one here, let me do that real quick. Let's go percent bands and 6% above. And I'm not really interested in the 6% below right now. So apply that. And you'll see, just like the S&P 5, oh yeah, I've got to put zeros. There we go. Just like with the S&P 500, there seems to be a range that QQQ will eventually fall back on. And I haven't actually played around with bands as much on QQQ. Um, oh, I put that on the wrong band. Hang on. Or on, on the wrong volume weighted average price. Here we go. Six, zero, zero, zero. And apply. So this actually went a little bit above, but for the most part, never gets more than 6% above. So that's typically what I'm watching when I'm trading to look for the tops, when I might want to back out of trades, uh, maybe play a put spread or excuse me, a call, a bear call spread, or even play straight puts on something like QQQ or SP, uh, SPY. Um, picking bottoms is a little bit different. So I'm gonna show you with Home Depot, uh, and then I'll maybe look at, I think Baba was another one I was looking at. So here's Home Depot, and you'll notice uh, I tweeted about this yesterday and today, I've made money on it both days, so I took a small naked call position yesterday that I made about 6% on. I took another one today that I'm up about 15% on and I'm actually swinging it overnight. So this is what I'm looking for on the move back down is it's move. So we had this volume weighted average price that it was bouncing on several times and then I cut through and here we've got a little doji right on the next uh, date anchored volume weighted average price. And when I pull up Robinhood, let's look at Home Depot you'll notice something really interesting that happens here. So here's the volume weighted average price anchored to yesterday. And you'll notice that the price bounces below all the way till the end of the day. And then it cuts above. I mean, it cut above here, but it almost immediately went back down, but then it cuts above and then comes right back to it. Well, if I move this so that the volume weighted average price is anchored to today now, you'll notice um, a different trend beneath, bounced, cut through, and at the end of the day, we bounced above, and then we bounced again. So this to me looks like a momentum shift in Home Depot. It doesn't necessarily mean that Home Depot's net, you know, gonna climb back up to 270 tomorrow or anything like that. All it means is it looks like the conviction of people that were selling is slowing down and a lot more people are buying it up at this price. And you can see here the average true range is uh, low in comparison to some of these historic areas. So I think that a reversal is very likely back up into maybe the 270 to 275 range. We could come back up 285 where this big volume shelf is up here. But I think that more likely we'll get into this range and then the whole market experiences a little bit of a sell off. So that's how I'm looking for um, reversal plays. Let's look at BABA so I can show you this on another one. Here is uh, BABA. So I saw the same thing back here where um, BABA had cut beneath and I played this bounce here and then I played this bounce here. I didn't actually write it all the way up, made my money and exited the trade. And um, on those days, which I believe, let's see, November 18th, I believe we'll be able to find this on BABA. Let's see if we can switch this to 11.18. Oops. Go 11.18, apply, and then I'm gonna have to take this time frame back to the last 30 days. Maximize that. 
And we'll zoom in in just a second once I find the right day. Here's 19. Okay. So here is 11.18 and 11.19. This is going to be a little more difficult to see uh, just because of how Thinkorswim renders this when I go back that many days on the five minute chart with these volume by price shelves. But you can pretty clearly see here, right? Bounces above or cuts above after bouncing below, cuts above, bounces, moves up. And then the very next day, so I'm gonna uh, switch this now to the 19th, which is right here. You can see that it hovers on it and then cuts above, bounces above almost all day. Uh, and it, it stays above. Here's this middle line here pretty much the rest of the day. And then right after that is when it had the really nice rally for a couple of days from you know, 260 up to 280 again. So that's typically what I'm looking for with a momentum reversal, catching it on a lower volume weighted average price uh, level. Typically I like to combine it with a volume shelf like in this case with BABA, big volume shelf here. I'd cut through multiple volume weighted average prices and the reversal looked good on the five minute chart as well, or the momentum shift looked like it had happened on the five minute chart. So uh, let's see, I had one more note. 6% bands. Oh, let's look at Zoom maybe. Zoom and Facebook. Okay. So a couple more just as bonus ones. Uh, this is how I scalp, because I've been getting some questions with how I scalp with the uh, bands, is typically I'll look for something that I think is going to be going up soon anyway. So in this case, Zoom. Uh, actually, I'm not a big fan of Zoom personally right now. Uh, I think that there's a much bigger downside potential, but for trading, I think uh, the price could move back up uh, a little bit over the next couple of weeks. So what I'm seeing is a big volume shelf here at the 410 range, right in between two volume weighted average prices. So then I say, okay, that's fallen quite a bit. I'm just gonna look for any uh, bounces that I can see. And I'm gonna pull this back to the last couple days and move this to, what was today, 12.08. And here's the volume weighted average price. So what I'm looking for is to find if there's anything um, that's in a lower point, and then I wanna find it on the minus 1% band for the day. So this purple line represents the volume weighted average price for today. And again, these are five minute candles. This band is 1% below volume weighted average price. This is 1% above. These bands aren't perfect, but you can see that the price pretty well stays within the 1% bands. So I would see something like this as an opportunity to enter Zoom, and these are really quick scalps, literally 15, 20, 30 minute scalps, sometimes an hour, that's about it, in and out uh, over the course of half an hour. Play that up as it's approaching the 1% line, or if it touches, that's my exit. Then you can see it comes back down, another entry potential here, write it up for an even bigger gain. Uh, in fact, if you wanna see, let's, let's just look at what those option contracts uh, may have looked like, let's say, instead of getting this week, you bought one week out just to play it a little safer. And you got like the, I don't know, the 430s. Okay. So here are the 430s today. And here is this first dip right here. So these could have been bought for about $910 here and sold for $1,000 there. So like a 9% gain. Or the second dip, purchased for $900, sold for $1,030, so about a 13% gain. That's all I'm looking for, 6% to 15% gains. Uh, sometimes you'll get really lucky, uh, if you, especially if you play the first thing in the morning rallies. Uh, these are a lot more risky in my opinion. You haven't had any anything to understand if it's going to be cutting above and bouncing above or cutting below and bouncing below. But here you can see you, know, you could have got in for 950, rode that all the way up to 1300, made a nice you know, 40, percent 50 percent or so that's typically what i'm looking like looking at for a scalp though facebook had another decent uh day you can see this one it just kind of bounced on the volume weighted average price all day but not a lot of movement so this is one again i'd be very careful with stop losses uh, and in fact I, if i start losing on this trade i almost always immediately exit um, so let's just say i was playing facebook and i was doing like these 290s or something like that uh, and I was just writing those bounces. So here, bounced on the volume weighted average price, get in for 390. 
here sell for 450 get in again for 390 here sell for you know 420 or so here get in for 400 sell for 430 so you can ride those bounces all day long if you know that a, a stock is respecting a volume weighted average price my preference though is typically because sometimes it can cut through to find it when it's on this lower 1% band and looking ready for a momentum change such as again Home Depot today my entry on Home Depot was right here and I almost added more to my position right here but I entered right here as I saw it was coming a little bit low had this little rally and a nice rally right after that um, let's see one thing to consider though is you can have what's what I call a VWAP slide I'm actually gonna see if Home Depot will give that to us uh, on, oops, what did I do there? There we go. What was this on the fourth? Nope, it didn't really do that. I need to find something. I saw, was it Zoom? Maybe it was Zoom actually. It was Zoom yesterday, I believe. Let's bring that back to the seventh. Yeah, here we go. So here's a potential situation uh, where playing the lower 1% band may be to your disadvantage, right? So I see this bounce here. Maybe I didn't catch it, and I maybe didn't catch this one either. And then I'm seeing this come back down, and I get in right here. And instead of bouncing, what happens is the price of Zoom basically just slides along this lower, uh, lower band for the rest of the day. And yeah, it kind of rallied here a little bit, but not significantly. Um, just sliding, sliding, sliding down. Um, fortunately, today's Zoom rallied, so if you did buy in there, even if it, you know, even if it slid down for the rest of the day, you could have gotten out this morning. But that is something to be concerned uh, or to be aware of is that the volume weighted average price doesn't have to, or the price of the equity doesn't have to return to the volume weighted average price. It can just continue to slide down. Uh, and the opposite is also true. Uh, what is it? F S L Y. I think today went on a tear. So here you can see it never even traded within the 1% band for the first few hours of the day and it continued to just grow, grow, grow and then eventually of course the volume weighted average price catches up to it as the price remains the same and the volume decreases and then you know what do you know as soon as it touches the volume weighted average price here, boom, uh, moves right back up again. The reason this can be so consistent is because computers do 90% of the buying and selling. Even if the actual buy order was set by a human, they're buying on the volume weighted average price. They're buying over a few days or several days or an entire day, and they don't want to be sitting here watching the computer to you know, get fills at all these dips. So they literally tell their broker to give them a fill at the volume weighted average price for the day or the week or the month or the last several days or until filled. And that's why these can be such valuable indicators in your trading. So. Let's see, we went over a little bit more than I expected. Uh, we're going on, on almost 20 minutes. This is a longer video than I, I normally do, but I, this is such an important principle to understand when markets are topping, when markets are maybe bottoming, and you can find these reversals to make money on. Because yes, play, like playing these momentum runners, sure, you could have gotten in you know, uh, here and wrote it up, or gotten in here and wrote it up. But there's so many of those times, right? Like say you bought in right here, you're like, oh my gosh, look at this momentum, it's fantastic. And then boom, right back down, right back down. Same thing here, right? Who knows what's gonna happen tomorrow? So the momentum's great if you like playing the momentum. Personally, I like playing the reversal and it works really, really well with theta decay options such as spreads. So if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, leave a like, comment below if you have any questions or you can shoot me a DM on Twitter um, I'll be putting out more content as I can. Life's getting a little bit more busy than I expected right now. I'm in the middle of home reno renovations. Uh, I'm also, that's why you see my desk moving all over the room right now and you know, there's nothing really happening. You'll see the, the wall, well, the walls have already changed color. The floor is changing in color. You'll see some new stuff happening soon. Um, I work full time and then in the evenings I'm also working on uh, building an app. So. Uh, things are a little more busy than I expected, but I'll still put on out content as much as I can because I feel like this is such important information. 
uh, that in the hands of the right people can help build wealth and really change lives. So have a great evening, everybody, and I'll catch you next time.